Hello again, Internet. Astro with Roro here. And today, I have something a little bit different for you. We're going to be talking about how to improve guiding, but not in the usual way that you would think of improving guiding. You see, guiding all comes down to three things. Firstly, how good is your mount at tracking the sky without needing inputs? If your mount is really accurate with its tracking, then you may not need to guide ever. Secondly, how good is your polar alignment? Even the best tracking mount won't be able to track the sky well if you haven't polar aligned correctly. And thirdly, it's how good is your seeing? Guide scopes and guide cameras work by watching the stars and trying to detect if they're drifting one way or another. If they're drifting too far in a direction, they'll send corrections to your mount to help your mount get back on track and keep that star in the perfect location. But what happens if the star that you're trying to guide on is jumping all over the place because the atmosphere isn't sitting still? So today we're going to try and still the atmosphere for our guide camera. If videos like this interest you, then have a think about hitting that subscribe button. And as always, there will be chapters just below in the video here where you can jump around to find the bits that you're most interested in watching. So how do you still the atmosphere? Well, unfortunately, terraforming isn't really a thing yet, so we can't control the atmosphere directly over our heads. But what we can do is change the way that we look at stars through our atmosphere. So as light from space enters the Earth's atmosphere and makes its way down towards the surface where we have all these great telescopes and cameras to capture and view it, it gets jostled around by all of the turbulence that's happening above us. You can imagine this like you're looking down through a pool, seeing water dancing on the pool surface underneath. This is exactly the same thing that happens to our views of planets, deep sky objects and stars through the atmosphere. Only instead of the pool being a couple of meters deep, the atmosphere is around 100 kilometers thick. Fortunately for us though, the atmosphere is nowhere near as dense as water. Now as light makes its way through the atmosphere, it will get bent differently depending on the wavelength of that light. The shorter the wavelength of light, the more that it gets bumped around by the atmosphere. Now, I always recommend people who are getting guide scopes to get a monochrome camera for their guiding. This means it doesn't get impacted by these changing wavelengths and stars looking weird hues. Instead, the sensor only cares is light hitting a pixel or not. This increases the sensitivity of your camera and also allowing you to have shorter guide exposures, which can help you sometimes get around some seeing issues. But that's not what we're talking about today. This technique usually only works for monochrome cameras unless you have a camera that doesn't have an infrared filter built in. Something like the 462 camera, for example, from ZWO or QHY. So today we are going to be trying out infrared guiding, as you may have guessed from the title of this video. What this does is limit the wavelengths of light that a guide camera receives by cutting out everything below the infrared. This will mean that the camera is actually looking at wavelengths of light that the human eye can't really see, but we don't need to see it, only the camera needs to see it. By removing all of the wavelengths of light under infrared, we are going to be reducing the amount of wobble that our camera sees stars jostle around in. This will reduce the uncertainty of the location of the star, allowing PhD2 to have a much better grasp of where that star actually is and tracking the star and the guiding of our mount as it should be, rather than getting distracted by the seeing of the atmosphere. Now, poor seeing doesn't just impact guiding. Poor seeing is very apparent if you try looking at, at any planet in space. You will notice all the time that the, that the quality of the image you are able to see or photograph is changing. Sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's atrocious. Here's an example of that that you can see. In this case, it's Jupiter. And here's an out of focus star that you can look at. This is actually the Antares star, out of focus on purpose. And you can see waves of heat and atmospheric ripples going across the surface of this out of focus star. So if you're ever interested in seeing how still the atmosphere is above you, you can simply take a video of a star that is slightly out of focus and watch as the atmosphere ripples across the rings of that out of focus star. Or if you have a refractor, larger circle of that out of focus star. So how are we going to do this? 
Well, it's actually very simple. Here we have the guide scope and guide camera that I'm going to be using for this experiment. And we're going to see if adding an infrared filter in between here is going to improve our guiding. So this guide scope that I'll be using is the 30 millimeter ZWO F4 guide scope. Nice little guide scope. And I will also be using this. This is the 294 monochrome mini guide camera. And on the end is this. This is the Antilla one and a quarter inch infrared 685 nanometer filter. And if I hold this up to the lens, you will see it does let a little bit of light through, but you can really only see the red light coming through. And that's because it's only letting through near infrared and infrared light. You can see if I hold it over my face, can't see anything. But if I hold it here over some red light in the background, if I can get things the right way, it lets a little bit of light through there. So yes, this will be cutting down some of the light that we're getting through, which will mean we may have to take some longer exposures on our guide cam. But let's see how we go with that, because this is a pretty sensitive little camera and I think we might be okay. So here you can see my setup. I've got the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. And on top of that, I have my brand new Skywatcher 150 Skymax Maxitov Cassegrain. And if you're interested in a review of this telescope, and it is a really cool little telescope, then don't forget to subscribe because I will be going through a detailed review of this telescope very shortly. This is a telescope that I won with the Skywatcher 2021 Astrophotographer of the Year competition for the solar system category. On top of that, you can see here, we have the guide scope and 294 monochrome mini, and this is all hooked up to my laptop. So let's get a baseline. Here are the results of 10 minutes of guiding. I pointed to a point in the sky and set it to run for 10 minutes. I left the mount completely alone. There was absolutely no wind. So this is about as accurate as I can get for guide testing. I also ran the PhD2 guiding assistant, and you can see those results just up here. The interesting thing to look at here is the high frequency star movement. And you can see that it has a total RMS of around half an arc second. That's pretty good seeing for me actually, because this is taken on my balcony and I have a huge amount of urbanization around me. So there's a lot of heat that's always getting radiated back up into the atmosphere at night, causing some truly dreadful seeing conditions. Let's add the infrared filter and see what happens. Well, here is the guiding assistant for a 10 minute run with the infrared filter. Now for this, I put the telescope back to the exact same alt as, as what I originally started because I didn't want the telescope rotating too much to change the balance on the telescope and maybe impact the way that the guiding was happening. I wanted as close as possible to the original guide conditions. And here, the interesting thing is, is that high frequency star movement has actually dropped to 0.32 arc seconds RMS. And that is not unsubstantial. That is a more than 30% reduction in the high frequency star movement that we're seeing. So does this translate to improved guiding? Well, here you can see that on my original guiding, I was getting around 0.79 arc second guide accuracy, which for me on this balcony is exceptional. I usually get much closer to one to 1.2 arc second RMS here, again, because of all the urbanization. So 0.79 really does show that this is an exceptional guiding night for me. But when we throw the infrared filter on, well, it gets a little bit better. It drops down to 0.73, and this is about a seven to 8% improvement in guiding, but I'm not confident enough to say that this is statistically significant and that it would improve your guiding. So I'm going to leave it up to you to make conclusions about whether this is something that you would gain an improvement from or not. If you are using an older version of PhD2 that doesn't use multi-star guiding, then I would say that you would be able to get a much larger improvement out of this. However, if you are using the most recent version of PhD2 that does use multi-star guiding, well, multi-star guiding already helps greatly with the ability for PhD2 to work out seeing and accurately track stars. That's because watching multiple stars over the entire sensor's field of view, PhD2 is able to work out those micro movements and counteract them against each other to determine the true movement of the stars. I think it is possible that the infrared filter does help a little bit extra here, and perhaps on a night of much worse seeing than what I had, I would have seen a much larger improvement in my final guiding. But I'm going to leave this one up to you. Do you think that infrared guiding is worth it? 
Will you be giving it a go? If you already have a filter around, then maybe you can just throw it on. I would love to hear your results if you drop them down in the comments below. And if this isn't for you, well, stay tuned because I have a whole bunch more videos that are about to come out. My name is Rowan, this is Astro with Roro, clear skies.